Okay, we're going to be trying out the Hawk Vittles Beef Stew. Ingredient list is pretty straightforward. We've got, <coughs> excuse me, beef, onion, carrot, beef stock, tomato, beans, and couscous. Uh, serves one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and add water until it's, what does it say, one inch over the top and let's stand 15 minutes. So I'm going to get my water ready and we'll put it in the pot. To save on cleanup, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, heat it up in the pouch inside my cup. Oop, I bet that was too much water. All right, we'll find out here in about 15 minutes. Here's your nutritional data if you're interested in that kind of thing. All right, here's what it looks like rehydrated. I don't see any beef in there. I see beans and couscous and onions. And tomato sauce. Let's give it a taste. Tastes good. The sauce has a beefy flavor. Beef and tomato. The main texture you get is the couscous, which is kind of a weird thing in a stew, but I understand why you would do it. If you've ever tried to rehydrate like potato dices or carrot chunks that are, they take forever. Imagine this couscous is kind of a trade-off to get something that rehydrates quick. It's kind of flavor neutral, just adds uh, something to chew on. So that meal was actually pretty good. Uh, there was be uh, beef in there. There was some hamburger that was uh, ground up pretty fine. You could see it once I put, <laughs> I could see it once I put my reading glasses on. Uh, but it was a, a tasty dish. But I think the real name of that is actually couscous in tomato sauce with meat. Um, it didn't taste stewy, like beef stew to me. Uh, it was really good. I just, uh, another one I think they got the label wrong on. But uh, definitely would I eat that again and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hey, it's from Barca. Another week up at Morning Wood. It's supposed to be not quite as hot as it was last week, but since I sweat when it's snowing, uh, yeah, it'll probably be slightly miserable if I start doing anything physical. But uh, yeah, lots of stuff to do today, so let's get to it. So I drew up up here with this butterfly plant in the back seat. I'm going to be putting it in the ground in a little bit. But uh, if you're not familiar with the butterfly plant, they are quite fragrant. fragrant, fragrant. And driving up here with this thing was pretty much the equivalent of having somebody sit in the passenger seat and spray a lilac air freshener in front of your face every 12 seconds. So uh, yeah, after a little bit, it got kind of annoying. I'll tell you what, that thing looks way smaller in the ground than it did in the pots sitting up, but uh, it should get a little bigger. One thing about this sandy soil is you can tell if uh, anything's been walking around here, and my camera's probably not good enough to pick it up, but I can see lots of little tiny uh, deer footprints, so someone's been around. So these are the daylilies I planted last year. And they actually all have a, uh, there's a sprinkler hose mounted underground and there's drip heads on each plant. So that's why they're still nice and green, despite the fact we haven't had rain for about a month. I already have a sprinkler system installed. So I went ahead and picked up uh, some hose and a couple more sprinkler heads and some T connectors. I'm just gonna go ahead and splice in there and uh, add more irrigation. So I screwed up when I was shopping for these this morning. Um, I grabbed two out of the box that said 360 degree, but when you're shopping at Wally World, you gotta check everything you put your hand on because people move junk around. Anyhow, it turns out not to be a terrible thing. It's working out pretty good, and I actually might go back and get some more of this style because I like the way it focuses the spray better. This is pretty troubling. I'm sitting up here on my chair and I'm looking down at the water and I'm hoping my camera can pick this up. 
But if you live in a Gulf Coast, you probably know what you're looking at already. That's a red algae bloom, which is bad news for fishes and for swimming and uh, harvesting any kind of saltwater product out of there. Now, fortunately, it's a pretty thin ribbon in here, and there's a lot of water exchange due to the tide, but that's bad news. So this is where I have been sitting for the last half a year. And then today I came up here and dug, see if I can, oh shoot, sorry, dug all those huckleberries out, which doesn't look as impressive in my viewfinder as they do if you see all the actual pile. So I could put this chair right here, and eventually I'll move that other chair up here. So you might say, why would I do that? So this is what it looks like from the lower chair. And this is what it looks like eight feet higher, which once again in the viewfinder, justice not being done to the actual view. The big difference being is I can see, and it's hard to tell right here, but if I zoom in, I might be able to see it. There's a bluff over here. I can't see it right now. Anyhow, I'm gassed because I was moving all that junk. Now the big reason would be is because right where, and I don't know if you can pick it up, but right where these clouds are, there's actually a big mountain right there, but it's too hazy to see it. But I suspect that those clouds are actually hung up on the top of it, which is why you can kind of see a peak. But if it was clear, you would see a big-ass mountain that looks cool. Well, I had to come down off the hill because the skeeters were starting to drain more blood from me than I cared for. Plus, it's time to start thinking about a fire tonight. A little corn soaking. Do corn over the fire. Well, it's almost dinner time. Start to let the fires. This is weird, as soon as I put the corn on, what was cold just burst into flame, so I'm gonna do some adjusting. Look at all them tiny berries. Man, I can't wait to start eating on them guys. Just give you an idea how small they are. Where's my tiny finger, by the way? You gotta pick a lot of them. 